In this video, I'm going to present my Benchmark Division B tower. This build isn't meant to be a template or a definitive design, but rather to show what a competitive tower might look like. One of the most useful things you can learn when working on your own designs and builds is to know what scores are possible. Historically, teams would have to go to competitions in person and pay careful attention to the best builds to gain these types of insights. I still recommend doing that, by the way, as that it's a great way to learn about your local competition. That being said, many teams are not fortunate enough to be able to go to highly competitive invitationals, and even fewer get to see high quality builds if they do. This video is meant to show just enough information to be a replacement for that type of experience. In future videos, I will explain in great detail my design approach and optimization journey on how I achieved this build, but for now I will only show the overall tower mass and results. Some teams may only want to use this limited information, while others may want more detailed information to try and replicate this build. This approach should provide options for both. Here you can see the tower on the scale right before testing, which simulates the check-in process at a competition. The total mass is 6.395 grams. Next is the tower on the testing stand right before the test. This event is a spectator event at competitions, so while you can't take pictures or videos of other people's devices, you can pay close attention and take notes if you'd like. If you are observing other devices that are similar to yours, pay attention to things that are both similar and different to yours. Here I am highlighting the fact that you can visually see that the top of this tower is obviously not as wide as the loading block, so perhaps it is using a tapered column design. Based on your experience, if you are watching this event at a competition, try to make predictions for how you think other towers will do and why, and then compare that to what really happens. Here is the live video of the simulated competition test. One interesting thing to pay attention to when watching other people test their device is to evaluate their loading strategy. You can tell from the visuals and sound that the entire loading process only takes about 35 seconds. Not all autoloaders are this fast, but it's generally a good idea to limit the amount of time your device is under heavy load, so it's okay to start slow, but faster is generally better after the first few seconds. Another thing you might notice is that I don't have anyone stabilizing the bucket. If you load the sand gradually, there will be almost no sway in the bucket and the stabilizer is generally not needed. It doesn't hurt to have one of course, but don't worry if you have to test alone. You can see that the total mass held here was 15.151 kilograms and would have qualified for the full load bonus. That means that the final score for this device would be 20,000 divided by 6.395 or 3,127. I fully expect many teams to be able to beat this score throughout the season, but I consider this a very good score and would likely be competitive in most competitions. If you want to achieve this score with a non-bonus build, the equivalent tower that held 15 kilograms would be 15,000 divided by 3,127, or roughly 4.80 grams. Because I wanted to further understand the weakness of this build, I decided to test it again to failure. I also wanted to get some cool high-speed footage to share with everyone. I loaded up the autoloader with over 20 kilograms of sand and retested the same tower. Somewhat surprising to me, this time it didn't hold the full load and failed at 14.412 kilograms. I'll go into more detail in future videos as to why this surprised me. But for now, it means that the most likely reason was that some internal damage occurred during the previous 15 kilogram test, or that I set up the loading block and tower in a slightly different way. Here is the high speed footage of the failure. The thing we're always looking for is the very first thing that breaks. Anything after that first failure mode doesn't really matter as the device is no longer intact. I'll freeze the footage right before it breaks, and you can clearly see that one of the cross members in the front on the third layer of the base fails first. As I continue the footage, you can see other cross members quickly fail right after that, and then the chaos begins. At least with the high speed footage, I get a few more seconds of enjoyment watching it get destroyed, and the three plus hours it took to build seem more worthwhile. 
In the next series of videos, I will do a deeper dive into how I approach this design and then some of the challenges I encountered when actually building it. Thanks for watching and feel free to reach out to me with any specific questions.